Janome. What I wanted to do today was to just give you an opportunity to、um, take a look at a machine and to give me a chance to share with you just a few tips and tricks、um, that I've learned for my hours on a machine.、Um, I am not a dealer. I am not a machine technician. I don't know a lot about machines. Except for what works for me, but I would still love to share that with you because、um, it is a time for sharing. First tip I have for you is that you should keep your box. So I'm going to use some non-sewing scissors here, and I'm going to open this. Going to get the protective layer of plastic off of it. And I want to very carefully open the box. There are people that keep boxes like this. You know, people that do that for their electronics, things like that. And there are people that don't. My suggestion is that you keep this box. And I have a tip for you. You're going to want to keep the packaging inside of the box as well. If you do not have a lot of space, you can collapse the box. And then just keep the packaging, which happens to be—I think this is technically a styrofoam—inside of here, and keep that in.、Um, wrap it in a bag and seal that up, and keep all of those things. They're going to be important if you move. They're going to be important if you want to ship this for service if you live in a remote area. It's going to be important to know that you can safely transport your machine the same way that the manufacturer felt that it was safe to transport it to you. And so I am a box keeper and not a box shredder. You're going to have some things inside of this box that are going to be important for you. The first one is going to be your instruction booklet, and I highly suggest that what you do is you get yourself a small notebook, even if it's only a one-inch notebook. Get some paper protectors and put them in your notebook, and that way everything pertaining to your machine, whether you have it serviced. What the date is of that service, where to go to find your instruction manual if something goes awry, is all going to be in one place. I'm going to suggest the same thing for all of your attachments, all of your feet, anything else that you use for this machine. Also, I suggest that you get yourself a little basket that has a top on it, or maybe a tin,、uh, something,、uh, a little box. Say、uh, a wooden box that you've collected, and put everything in one place. There is a dust protector here, and if you don't want to make your own, or if you don't know that you even can make your own, since this is your first machine, maybe this is going to be very helpful. You want to protect your machine from the elements, no matter where you store it or where it lives. You've got a box here that's got some basic things in it, in terms of tools and also some of those accessories. They have given you some needles. And let me tell you a little secret. If this is your first machine, that a sewing machine needle is different than a needle that you would use to stitch something by hand or put a button on a shirt on. Now, most of you that already quilt are laughing, but we have to start at the beginning. Remember, this could be a very first machine for people, so you want to go and do a little bit of research on needles.、So、if you give me just a moment, I'll get this out of the box, and we'll take a little tour of some of the other things that a sewing machine is made of. Okay, we've gotten this out of the box, and we've taken the、uh, styrofoam off of both sides of it. This has two more pieces that have come in the box, and that is a power cord. And that simply gets plugged in to one set of plugs right here on the side. So any machine, you're going to have the same issue. You're going to have a power plug that you put in. Usually they have a flat side and a rounded side, so match those up and slide that in until you can't slide it anymore. There is also something called a foot pedal, and this is going to be how you control the start and stop of the machine. Actually, taking stitches.、Um, without boring you of the history of sewing machines, I want to tell you that a machine has thread. A sewing machine, a modern sewing machine in today's world, has thread on the top and the bottom. You have a thread that's going to sit here, and 
the instructions usually for how to thread your machine, how to go through all of these different knobs and dials and everything before it goes into the needle is usually printed on the front or you can find it in your manual. A lot of times if you're having problems with your machine, go back and check and see if you have threaded the machine correctly. That is one of the biggest things that I can tell people. The other place that there is thread is in the bobbin. The bobbin lives underneath this area right here. A lot of times you'll see that they are loaded either on the top or in the front. This is a... Oh, Eek! This is a side-loaded bottom bobbin. Let me see if I can't get that out of there. Maybe I can do it since I know that moves, comes out. Excuse me for just a moment here. Not familiar with where this is. There we go. No, here we go. This is a bobbin casing and this is called a bobbin. And this bobbin right here will also have thread on it. You need to wind that. Most machines will have a bobbin winder, which is what this is right here. And that allows you to thread into this, again, this is all related to tension, area here and onto the bobbin. You wind this, you cut this in half, and then you put this in with some instruction about where the thread is supposed to lay and then this goes back into that bobbin casing. So you have thread on the top and on the bottom. Because, as you can imagine, I'm not going to mess with this right now. As you can imagine, what's going to happen is the needle is going to go down into the bobbin area, and then the bobbin is going to rotate, and it's going to hook around the thread on the, it's going to allow the top thread to hook around the bobbin thread and then come back up and that will mean that you have one stitch that is attached with this loop to loop attachment. Then your feed dogs, which is another um, term that you need to know, which are these three little grooves right here, are going like this and they're helping the fabric move along so that the next time the needle goes down and is caught on that rotary catch thingy, which I don't have the exact name of because I told you I'm not a machine person, but it catches on that and then brings it back up, is in the next place. And then the feed dog moves it again. And this all happens in this machine, as an example, at 1600 stitches per minute. So that's very fast. That's a lot of that happening all at once. So every time the needle goes down, there's something in, on the bottom that's spinning, throwing a, a throwing a thread around another thread and making that link. Not a chain, but making a link of two different pieces of threads. One of the things that people talk about a lot in having problems with their machines is with tension. And tension is that equal and even pull of the top thread and the bottom thread. Sometimes the bottom thread is too strong and it's pulling the top thread down too much. Sometimes the top thread is pulling top thread too much and you want that to be even. And so quite often if you're having problems with your stitches, go to your manual and take a look at the information about tension. So back to this. This is going to be how your machine starts and stops the needle from going up and down. So first you want to attach this the same way that you attached your power cord. This is going to go underneath your table and you're going to use your right foot if you're right-handed. I know some people mix and match, but this is going to go in. Let's see if I get this right. This is going to go in right next to your power cord. Did I get that? Oh, I got it right the first time. And again, you're going to push it in until it won't go in any further. And this will go down here. I don't Once you have threaded your machine and you have filled your bobbin and put it in its proper place, you're going to want to give your machine a little test drive. You're going to make sure that you have threaded your needle in the proper direction. Some needles thread from the front to the back. 
other machines thread from left to right or right to left. A little known fact is that in the old days when the Singer featherweights came out, they were threaded in a very specific manner, meaning threaded the needle. And if you threaded them backwards, they wouldn't sew at all. And so many people thought that their machine was broken, when in reality, they had just threaded the needle incorrectly. So make sure, again, that you go back to your instruction manual and give yourself some time to really get to know your machine. You're going to put your presser foot down, and there's a little lever in the back, so you're going to put that after you've got a piece of fabric in there, you're going to put this down. And remember, your feed dogs are going to do most of the work. So when you're on this side, you really have no reason to have your hands or to have your fingers anywhere up in this area. I don't know if you can see where I am, but I'm up close to where the needle is. Let the feed dogs do the work. Your hands are going to be back here, and they're simply going to guide the fabric into that area, making sure that that seam is straight. This machine, again, as I mentioned, is very simple. It has a reverse right here. It actually has a little thread cutter, which is right here. But otherwise, this is a straight stitch machine. You might have found that you've purchased a machine that has more bells and whistles, if you will. It will allow you to make a buttonhole as an example. It will allow you some decorative stitches or maybe a zigzag stitch. As you can imagine, this is a straight stitch. A zigzag is going to go like this and make little zigs and zags. And so all of these things I know are new to you if you have just purchased a machine. And so you're going to want to spend some time with your manual. But remember, just the basics, please. Keep your hands away from where the needle is. Let the feed dogs do the work. And those are those little teeth there that are moving the fabric forward for every stitch. You're going to lift your presser foot up, put your fabric in there, put the presser foot down, and then use your uh, foot pedal, which is underneath your table here. And to get used to that, you're just going to need to sort of see the same way that you did when you had a gas pedal and it was your first time in a car. I think that's about it from here. We've given you more questions, I'm sure, about your machine than we've given you answers. But you can always find the technical information about the thingamajigger or the whatchamacallit in your manual that came with your machine. And uh, if that put a smile on your face, then my work here is done. Now it's time for you to start and work on some masks or some other thing that you can send off to someone and thank them for the work that they're doing, for our medical professionals, for the people that are our essential workers, a way that if you could, you would give them that, that big old bear hug. <laughs> but for now, all you can do is say thank you from afar. And just like me, I will say um, from my home to yours, uh, stay safe and stay well.